Good morning and welcome back. I'm so glad you've joined us today for DI Lives Exploring 3D Printing Technologies, a look into FDM, polyjet, and stereolithography. We invite you to stick around after today's presentation for a live Q&A. We'll get started momentarily. We're just waiting a couple minutes for others to join us. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Without further ado, I'll hand things over to Mark Abshire, Application Engineer for Manufacturing Solutions at CATI. Welcome to Exploring 3D Printing Technologies. I'm Mark Abshire, and I'll be your guide on this treacherous journey. There will be a lot of information thrown at you, but it's always better to have more info than not enough info. I have included a summary comparison at the end of this presentation that will be a helpful reference. So let's get started. Here's the first thing you need to know about 3D printing. There are literally thousands of 3D printers out there today. And these are just a few of the 3D printers that Stratasys offers. It's not just about the build size. It's that each 3D printer has different capabilities and different materials, and each 3D part has different physical requirements and different geometries. We're going to explore three of the most common technologies in 3D printing world. FDM, Fused Deposition Modeling, Sterilithography, and Polyjet. From left to right, the first four machines in the picture are FDM printers. The center machine is a new stereolithography V650 Flex, and the last four are all polyjet technology. So let's get started with FDM. FDM, or Fused Deposition Modeling, builds durable, accurate parts used for concept models, functional prototypes, manufacturing tools, jigs, fixtures, and end-use parts. Stratasys invented the FDM, or Fused Deposition Modeling Technology, in the late 1980s. FDM remains the most common method of 3D printing today for both hobbyist and industrial use. FDM takes heated thermal plastic filament and extrudes it layer by layer to create a three-dimensional part. Stratasys typically uses two print heads with two different materials. One print head is dedicated to model material, while the other has support material. Most hobbyist machines on the market use the same material for model and support, making it difficult to separate support from the finished part. 
Stratasys often uses dissolvable support material to make it even easier and faster to get the finished model you need. Here you can see the different machines shown by size and capability. The Shared Office series is made up of the F123 group with different build envelope sizes and materials available. The Production series increases build size as well as material options. All FDM machines use GrabCAD print software to prepare jobs. In addition, the F370 and above machines can all use the advanced Insight software that allows you to customize each layer. Most 3D printers build three-dimensional models by stacking two-dimensional layers. FDM machines can build in 5,000th, 7,000th, 10,000th, 13th, or even 20,000th inch layers. Depending on the material and the machine, if you need good detail, 5,000th layers will do the job. If you need your model fast, 20,000th layers will meet your need for speed. Be aware that the layer resolution can create stair-stepping. As you can see, the stair-stepping is more pronounced as the angle becomes more acute to the base. But Stratasys has released a new adaptive slicing to reduce stair-stepping. Adaptive layer slicing is now available on select FDM machines. Here's an example of a part in GrabCAD print with the layer set to seven thousandths of an inch and the adaptive slice style selected. The slicing algorithm will apply seven thousandths only to the necessary features and use ten thousandths for the remainder. Let's see what that looks like in a slice preview. In the slice preview, you can see that ten thousandths layers are used primarily for the straight walls while 7,000th layers are used for the horizontal holes and the part radii. This allows the part to build faster while giving the better 7,000th feature detail to the required areas only. If we had selected 10,000th layers with our adaptive slicing, it would have applied 13,000th layers to the straight walls and 10 on the horizontal holes and the part radii. For FDM, we will be using thermoplastics only, and we'll discuss photopolymers later in this presentation. Thermoplastics can be melted and remolded or reshaped. These are often recycled plastics. Think of them as a chocolate bar that can be melted and reshaped. There's a wide array of standard plastics, ABS being the most common in the industry. ABS with ESD, or electrostatic dissipative properties, can be useful with electronics. The ASA side mirror shown here offers mechanical properties of ABS while also being UV or ultraviolet resistant. And of course, lots of colors are available. With engineered plastics, Stratasys offers resilient polycarbonate and polycarbonate blends and a couple of nylon choices. The saw handle shown here is PCABS. New to the lineup is Duran with mechanical properties of Delrin, now available on the Stratasys F370. Delrin is most used in tooling applications for its dimensional stability, lubricity for wear resistance, and the non-mooring surface texture. Shown here is a robotic end-of-arm tool made with the new Delrin material. Stratasys offers a TPU with a 92 Shore A value for automotive uses. A protective rubber boot or a textured cover for a brake pedal can be built for design verification without investing in any tooling. High performance materials include Ultim for high temperature applications and Taro with Peak, that's polyether ketone ketone, for high chemical resistance and nylon 12CF carbon filled material for extraordinary strength properties. Shown here is nylon 12CF brake pedal with the highest strength to weight ratio, 
Nylon 12 CF is very important to the automotive industry. Stratus Specialty Materials offers custom colors, certified grades, and soluble ST-130 material. Shown here is a duct wrapped with carbon fiber around ST-130 material. ST-130 was developed to be dissolvable sacrificial tooling for complex shapes with composite parts, and we'll talk more about that application later. Now let's look at PolyJet. PolyJet uses photopolymers that is deposited with an inkjet printhead and flashed with a UV light. If you have an inkjet printer at home, you may be more familiar with the PolyJet technology than you think. PolyJet uses the same kind of printheads that your home printer would use. The two differences are that Stratus has incorporated a Z-axis so the ink could build up layer by layer, and they use a special photopolymer ink. Photopolymer materials are hardened with UV light. PolyJet technology uses separate soluble support material that allows you to just wash away the support material from your model. New to the PolyJet lineup is the Stratasys J55 with a revolutionary build strategy using a polar coordinate system rather than the traditional XY Cartesian coordinate system. The Conix 3 machines can mix up to three model materials to define specific colors or to create different mechanical properties. Stratasys J series printers can load up to eight different materials including the support material and they will yield more than 500,000 colors and blending of multiple materials for specific mechanical properties. In addition, almost 2,000 colors have been Pantone certified. And also new is the Digital Anatomy printer on the far right, specifically made for the medical industry with new materials for medical realism. Jetting technology uses DPI to create layers, just like a video screen. The more dots per inch, the better the resolution. A two-dimensional square inch at 600 by 600 DPI dots per inch produces 360,000 dots. With 360,000 dots in the X and Y, the Z-axis layers can build even finer at 1,600 dpi. Doing the math, this means a cubic inch is made up of 576 million droplets to create incredible detail. We already discussed thermoplastics, now let's take a look at photopolymers that, unlike thermoplastics, undergo an irreversible change. Photopolymers, sometimes called resins, are liquids that are hardened with a catalyst. Ultraviolet is used to photoinitiate or harden the liquid to a solid. Once a polymer has been hardened, it will never melt back to a liquid. It can be burned at high temperature and will turn to ash around 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, but it will never return back to liquid. Let's take a look how polyjet materials are mixed together to modify mechanical properties or produce a range of colors. Typically only two materials are combined to modify mechanical properties, but multiple colors can be combined to create over 500,000 color combinations. Now let's take a look at some of the specific materials. The Vero family is a starting place for materials with the PolyJet technology. The Vero family offers a wide range of vivid, transparent, or solid colors. Here are a couple of consumer examples with a water bottle using the Vero Vivid material showing a semi-transparent color. Also a shoe model entirely 3D printed to simulate color, shading, and texture. Next in the material portfolio are the flexible materials. Agilus 30 with a Shore A of 30 durometer is the second generation of the flexible materials with better tear strength than the original Tango material.
Flexible materials can be blended with other materials to modify the durometer ranges from 30 to 95 on the shore A scale. So simulating the overmolded edges of a GPS concept model or the flexibility of a food container lid is achievable. Next is the Vero Flex material, specifically made for the consumer eyeglass industry. Vero Flex is stiffer than the 30 to 95 Shore A range, but still more flexible than the Vero family. And for the medical market, we've offered biocompatible and dental materials for quite a while, but new is the bone matrix, tissue matrix, and the gel matrix materials exclusively for the new digital anatomy printer. These materials have specific build parameters to create the structure, texture, and feel for anatomical simulation and diagnostics. Specialty materials include high temperature photopolymer and a digital ABS. The plastic injection mold shown here is made with digital ABS and shot with a polystyrene material. Plastic injection molds can be a tool for development, short run productions, or even bridge tooling for production until your high volume tool becomes available. Now moving on to stereolithography. The word stereolithography was invented in 1984 for the first patent application of 3D printing. It's made up of three Greek words, stereos, meaning three-dimensional space, lithos, meaning hard or solid, and graphos, writing or printing. So the true definition of stereolithography is three-dimensional solid printing. Stereolithography starts with an ultraviolet laser. The optics module filters or separates the light to project only the 355 nanometer light range required to harden the liquid photopolymer resin. The scanning galvanometer are mirrors on servo motors that reflect and direct the laser beam for the XY axis drawing motion. The laser is focused at the surface. Only the surface is solidified as it is drawn. The platform lowers and the recoder blade smooths a new layer of resin to repeat the process. Here you can see how layers are drawn in the vat of liquid photopolymer until the part is complete. The Stratasys V650 Flex can build large parts, typically with four to six thousandths of an inch layers. The laser beam width, while it's adjustable, is typically set at ten thousandths of an inch. Interchangeable vats allow for multiple materials to be used, and vats can be different sizes. Any 355 dental photopolymer can be used, but there are five material profiles that are tested and approved. Let's take a look at those materials. Somos Watershed was introduced in 2002, and it continues to be the most popular stereolithography resin due to its clarity and water resistance. Somos Next is exceptionally tough and impact resistant. Even a lacrosse prototype shown on the left can withstand rugged use. Somos Element was created specifically for the investment casting industry with no heavy metals. Antimony is typically used as a photo initiator, but for this particular material, it's been eliminated for the casting industry, and it yields a low ash during the casting pattern burnout cycle. Somos BioClear has passed the stringent ISO 10993-5 cytotoxicity, ISO 10993-10 irritation and sensitization, and the USP Class 6 testing, making it ideal for non-implantable limited body contact for medical and dental applications. Somos Perform is a ceramic field material 
that will meet the needs of high temperature applications, such as plastic injection molding, under the hood automotive uses, wind tunnel models, and more. Now let's move to applications. I think applications can be divided into three groups, marketing, engineering, and manufacturing applications. This is by no means an exhaustive list of applications, but rather a very basic look in our limited time. We will take a brief look at each of these and see which technology fits best, starting with marketing and concept applications. All the technologies that we have looked at are useful to create essential communication models. These are especially important for discussion between marketing, engineering, and manufacturing. Getting all the disciplines to the same page early would significantly reduce time and cost to any project. For visual realism, Polyjet's ability to produce over 500,000 colors with shading makes it a sure winner. The example at the left shows a flat piece with shading to create a three-dimensional appearance. If you need over-molded parts, Polyjet can print an assembly in one piece to produce colors as well as flexible derobiters in the same build. The durability of FDM or stereolithography makes large-scale or full-size models a better choice for large models that would be transported to trade shows, corporate displays, things like that. Polyjet's incredible detail can even print text, labels, or logos directly on the part. The stereolithography laser can be focused to also produce fine detail. Shown here is a medical example that will take a blood sample and separate it from multiple tests. Nylon 12CF with chopped carbon fiber is the strongest FDM material available that is great for end use, production, and tooling applications. Ultim 9085 meets FAA flame, smoke, and toxicity requirements and is used extensively in the aerospace industry for end-use production parts. This works well because the material is strong and can build complex parts for low-volume production. Antero is a very high-temp and high-chemical-resistant material. This is used in space applications because of its low outgassing and also used in aerospace in situations where parts can be exposed to strong chemicals like hydraulic fluids and fuels. Also, there's a recent Antero 840 material developed with ESD or electrostatic dissipative properties. For flexibility, the TPU-92A is a thermoplastic polyurethane and serves as a good choice on FDM to simulate durable rubber parts. Polyjet technology lets you mix materials to create a range of flexibility to stiffness, even in colors. For durability, Somos Next offers superior impact resistance. Shown here is a hockey blade made with Somos Next and tested in real world conditions. Here I should mention that I am located in the St. Louis office and the Blues are the current Stanley Cup champions. Go Blues! Moving on to thermal properties, ceramic filled Somos Perform will withstand the heat with a low coefficient of thermal expansion. Shown here is a good use of the material and an automotive under the hood application. On the right side is a transmission that was operated at 8,000 RPM for 8 hours to observe fluid flow around the transmission gear assembly. With this testing, Porsche was able to evaluate the precise amount of red transmission fluid necessary to ensure lubrication and still save the weight that is crucial to the Le Mans race. 
Here you can see wind tunnel testing used to reduce noise and vibration with a stereolithography front end chassis. Clear parts from Polyjet or stereolithography with a polarized filter will produce an FEA simulation. For more information on this application, we have a blog of this on our website. Size is always relative in engineering, based on the product's function. Whether it be highly detailed parts with Polyjet, or very large investment casting patterns made with stereolithography. Now let's take a look at the third type of applications, manufacturing. FDM excels in tooling applications with jigs, fixtures, and shop aids using thermoplastic for strength and internal sparse fill structures to reduce weight for ergonomics. End of arm tooling can be strong, lightweight, and cheaper to replace. These factors will increase the life of a robotic arm, and plastic also aids with the non-marring surfaces. Because of the porosity of FDM, it's unnatural to pull a vacuum in thermoforming tools, eliminating the need for vent holes. FDM offers a variety of materials to withstand the pressures of a hydroforming tool. Stratus has developed the ST-130 specifically to withstand higher temps and pressures while still being dissolvable. ST-130 is used to create an internal structure that can be used as the form for composite layup or filament winding. Then it's easily removed, produce a seamless, strong, lightweight part. Stereolithography high temp materials can also be used for composite layup tools. Because photopolymers will never melt back to a liquid, this makes stereolithography and polyjet good candidates for low volume plastic injection molding. Stereolithography can create quasi hollow parts that can be used for investment casting patterns without traditional costly molds. I would like to mention that the person on the far left is me pouring a casting. We actually do practice what we preach. On the right, you can see the assembly pieces which are made with stereolithography to produce a core box of a complex sand casting core shown on the left. For size reference, my business card is on the tool. Silicone molding, also known as RTV, or room temperature vulcanization, works best with smoother surfaces on the master part produced by polyjet or stereolithography. Stereolithography is best for metal plating. Somos performed ceramic field material will significantly reduce metal flaking caused by expansion and retraction of the base model under temperature changes. The plated SL grill shown here was used in a car show when a new concept metal grill could not be completed on time. And finally, a couple of examples of in-use parts using polyjet and stereolithography. You've seen an overwhelming amount of info here, so let's do a quick and simple summary. Here's a simple comparison of all three technologies we have discussed. Fused deposition modeling, polyjet, and stereolithography. The chart describes the process of each to show the differences. and a general comparison of material. If color is important to your application, 
Keep in mind that only PolyJet can mix materials for color and mechanical properties. This summary will give you an idea of which marketing applications may fit best for fused deposition modeling, PolyJet, or stereolithography. And here is a comparison of engineering applications showing the three technologies with respect to physical and mechanical applications. And finally, where the different technologies fit best in some manufacturing applications. Again, nowhere near a complete list, but some of the most common. And for more information, I invite you to utilize the many resources that CATI provides. Thank you for your attention. If there's any questions, I can take those now.